Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to Overanalyzing Everything. I am your gracious host, Skylar, not to be too flattered by myself. And these are my two very special guests today, the Henson brothers. We have Kevin and Daniel. I'll refer to them as Coach and Mr. Henson just because it's easier for me to remember their names. Hi, Skylar. Um, Hi, Skylar. It's, I'm so glad you guys were able to come on. Um, we've got a lot to talk about today. Um, a lot of overanalyzing, I should say, right? We're very good at it, yeah. Um, I guess this is probably your first podcast, isn't it? First time on this one, yeah. Okay. Yes. For some reason, I was trying to think that I'd been on one before. But I, <laughs> I, I guess not. <laughs> Just reaching very far <laughs> down in there. <laughs> Wait, what that one time, I was no, I've never been on a podcast. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that I was. I, that. A part of me was hoping there'd be some sort of narrative that you'd just bring up on this on this story of such an amazing podcast you had been on before. But, <laughs> yeah. but I think it was just from years of talking about the idea of doing it and had really silly ideas for doing a podcast, but. <laughs> no, I've never done it. <laughs> um, well, I've got a few topics I'd like to get to. The main one um, that I've been really thinking about, I know we've kind of talked about it a little bit off, um, yeah. but I haven't been in too much detail, which is what I'm excited to get into, is um, our basketball problem. Okay. Would you like for me to introduce that? I, I would love it, actually. Okay. So, it started one day, Coach Brewer and I were talking about just it was a silly rant but about making a basketball shot. I think he might have made a shot, and I kind of over-exaggerated how impressed I was, which seems like something I do if I'm watching him play basketball. Um, and I was like, oh, wow, the odds. Oh, how did you how did you make that? And then he said, well, if you think about it, and that's when you know that we're, we're digging deep into something yep. now. you got to get your feet He said, if you, if you think about all the possible places I could have chucked that basketball – the odds of it landing there in that basket. And we're like, well, heck, you figure how far can you throw? Like, what's the guess? How far can you throw a basketball? Well, I mean, you think about it. It's just like, well, I mean, like if, really, you, if I set you on if, a football field, the goal line, and said, yeah. chuck this basketball as hard as you can and as far as you can, how far is that ball going? I could probably get it to about the 30-yard line. Also, uh, yeah. Like 30 yard. yeah. Yeah. So um, you think about it. You think about a 30-yard radius. Which 30 yard is the length of the basketball court anyways, yeah. roughly. Is it 90 feet for a basketball? About 90 feet. I, I should probably know that. But yeah. Okay. I mean, you I mean, you and Coach Brewer are both coaches. So. Well, <laughs> don't, over, don't overestimate my knowledge here. <laughs> so you figure you could chuck it, you know, a radius the length of the basketball court. So you could chuck it from anywhere on the court, clear the court easy, right? Yeah. Just anywhere, anywhere. Okay. So now you pick any spot on the basketball court, you figure that large of a radius, it landed in the basket. Happened to land it's, in that basket. It's, you know, and I, just to look at it that way, as a mathematical probability, it's nigh miraculous. That's incredible that you I mean, did that. Astronomical odds, right? So the fact that when you watch an NBA game, Oh my goodness! Those are miracles. You're watching just a f a, a, a feat of physics defying wonder. I mean, this yeah. is incredible. Now, the more we actually dwelled on it, because obviously we realize that's ridiculous. It can't be that stupid. right, of course. But uh, so it's a geometric probability, yes. right? Which yeah. is different than standard probability. If you're not familiar, it's more of a like if you think about. A, a target that you're aiming for like a bullseye on the way to find the probability of hitting that is the uh, area of the target or the, the whole target or the area of the bullseye divided by the area of the whole target. That's your yeah. geometric probability. So you, I figure you take the area of that opening of the basketball goal divided by the area of everywhere you can throw it. Now yeah. it's still an incredible probability. Yeah. That's nuts. Right. But, it's not as nuts well, as just conceiving it. So if we actually, you know, it's fun to dwell on it that way, to say that it's, <laughs> obviously it's not a mathematical impossibility that that's occurring, yeah. obviously. also assuming that the ball is being placed somewhere randomly on the court, which is not happening. And the player, and the, well, not the player, now, the person who's throwing it doesn't know they're throwing it at a basketball hoop. They're just chucking it. Right. So... So I, and I know that someone much smarter than us has has already done the 
the analytics on what factors go into limiting those variables. But yeah. okay, so off the top, w- w- like you said, it's not a matter of just setting someone on a random spot on the court and saying blindly, I'm not telling you how far you are away from a basket. You might be anywhere up to 30 yards away from the hoop, and your job, blindfolded, is to face a direction. Throw a ball. Throw a ball. (laughs) Whatever power you – in that case – that's nuts. The, the That's odds insane. of you, the odds of you even, now. even getting close to the rim are astronomical. Okay, but now, now this is this is an aspect I hadn't really considered. So we need to get a. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, let's. We think. need to get a movable basketball goal on a football field. Yeah. Set someone at midfield, blindfold them, put a basketball in their hands, and just spin them around a few times. Say, "There's a basketball goal somewhere." <laughs> Please make it and just chuck that ball okay, well, somewhere. The odds let's take, let's now, take, now are really now astronomical. Shot. That is that is almost an impossible shot. Now we're talking impossible shot. But so now we pick the problem. Okay, so the but the variables we're getting we're getting <laughs> getting rid of some of the unknowns by telling them, hey, here's a basket. Hey, but in fact, we're adding more because think of the probability of one of us getting a person to actually go along with this that doesn't know the project. You know, when you're taking a survey, you usually want to take people who are third parties or not a part of it. Oh, man. And the fact that we had to get a football field in the first place. Okay. okay. So So really, if you just want to take this further, we can go further. So we figure it's already an impossible shot. To begin with. But then, okay, so if we asked 100 people, how many people do you figure would say, yes, I'll do this experiment? I have a feeling it'd be, a, I bet it'd be a little bit above half. A little bit above half. Can we call it 55, 60%? Let's say, let's say go, go with that? a nice even 60%. 60%. <laughs> yep. just... As good as I am with any, any okay. of the rest that, of this. Hey, this, this, is, this is science, man. Yeah. So, okay, so 60% of people. Now, hey. what, are, <laughs> what are the odds that we can get a uh, a football field? That, that's pretty high that we can yeah. find a football field somewhere, right? Yeah. Say with 95% certainty, well, right? Well, I mean, yeah, you could always go to like a park or something. They sometimes have football fields at the local high now school. Now we're talking. Yeah. So maybe he's even as high as 99 because I don't think this really affects the math of the problem any. No. So <laughs> if <laughs> we take, so we got 60% times 99% even. Yeah. Times zero, I guess. <laughs> Which, again, is, it, is it zero or is it one of those limits where it's just approaching zero, but it never what's really. What's the probability of that, that first scenario? Of the actual so, shot? So, okay, prob- so so you're asking, what is the probability of asking a random person on the street if they would go to a football field, yes, blindfolded, that's right, with a moving basketball goal, allowed to be spun around five times, and then told there's a basketball goal somewhere, hit it? What are the odds they make? I a don't shot? see where this is far fetched in your mind. Like <laughs> nothing about this I seems think, odd I think to this me. Seems completely practical. So okay, hold on. The, now let's let's actually let's actually hit this. How big is a basketball goal? Like in, in. How big is it? Is it? A, oh, I think we're, I think we're going to get that information because we need if we yes. know the if we know the diameter of the basketball goal, we can figure out the probability at least to a rough degree. Yeah, Here, of, of hitting that. Um, eighteen inches. 18 so that inches. means the ball is nine inches. I think. Okay. In diameter. So, you figure an eighteen-inch circle, right? Yeah. We said probably a thirty-yard radius, so that's about a. Oh goodness, ninety feet times twelve. How many inches is that? Ninety feet times twelve. Let's see. That's what a. Oh gosh. Nine. How many inches is ninety feet? Oh, better yet. Hold oh on. boy, Hold we got to come. If yeah. it's eighteen no, inches, that's one and a half feet, right? Yep. Okay, so you got a one and a half foot circle. Yep. Somewhere in a. That's one and a half foot diameter circle. Yep. Somewhere in a hundred eighty, foot, diameter circle. So your probability. Is pi times 1.5 squared divided by pi t- times 180 squared. So 1.5 squared divided by 180 squared, yep. which yes. is just 1.5 divided by 180. No, it's not, because you got to square it. Yep. 1.5 yep. squared is 2.25. 180 right. squared is... Bigger. Bigger. <laughs> Thank you for breaking that down for me. Is is pretty large. We need these numbers. Can I, can I whip that oh, yeah, whip of course, a calculator of course. To, to do this real quick? Because... I mean, <laughs> I don't expect you to do it all in your head. Well, I was, now it is a disappointment that you're whipping out your calculator. Yeah, but I, I, I will give you a mulligan. here. I feel like I I should have been able to do that, but that's okay. <laughs> Times one point five. I said that's two point two five. I was right about that. Okay. Isn't a mulligan how you do your hair? 
Nice. <laughs> oh, not, not, not that, not that. 180 times 180. Okay. Okay, so according to this, there's a point zero 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 seven percent chance that someone makes that shot. Now, we do have to kind of ignore the fact that you can hit it from... I mean, it's even less than that, because yeah. depending on the angle that you throw it at... And like, the power of your it's land not just hit, circle and then not go in. Right. Yeah. It's, it's got to hit that circle, or at least roughly that circle, you know, a little bit of leeway. you got to hit that circle. Um, wait a minute. Wait. I guess we're assuming that the, the ball is just treated as a sing- singular point, I yes. guess. Yes. Okay, so, yes. which is fine, which kind of gets rid of, I was, I was thinking there's there's got to be some give for the fact that you could actually not hit the circle perfectly. The ball doesn't have to go all the way in, right? It could yeah. hit to the side and still fall in. So if we assume that the center of the ball is that point, if the center of the ball hits inside in, the rim, that it inside will the probably rim, it fall will. in. You could assume it'll we'll fall assume in. We'll assume that, and that'll get rid of some... Uh, make it a little easier. So that'll make it a little easier to assume and calculate. So we're like, we're at point zero 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 zero. It's actually 6.9, but I round up because, you know, what's one hundredth of a... Per, well, that's this is a decimal. Yeah. So it'd be one thousandth of a percent, right? What does yeah. that really matter? Yeah. I don't think we're you know we're we're splitting hairs already as is. So we already said that it's only about a sixty percent chance that someone actually does it times a ninety nine percent chance that we can actually get a football field, right? Yes. Okay. So by my calculations, by my calculations, per your calculations, the odds of us going to a stranger on the street saying, come with us to a random football field. We're going to put a random basketball goal out there somewhere. Somewhere. You just have to chuck the ball, and it. let's hope it goes in. Yes. Oh, and you're blindfolded. Um, the odds of it all coming together, honestly, it still seems high to me. It, really? my, my numbers say four um, thousandths of a percent. Four thousandths of a percent. So, if we let one thousand people do it, four of them might hit it. No, no, less. No, less. If we let a hundred thousand yep. people do th- it, yep, four people would make it. Maybe. I mean, That's, maybe, maybe that seems high mm-hmm. to me, though. Well, because you've not accounted for the fact that some people can't throw it that far. If it's at the wrong angle, it it will hit and not go in. It'll just bounce out. There's a lot more. To well, okay. For. So if you think about it, the longest shot that's counted as points in an NBA game was Baron Davis from 89 feet. He wow. had an NBA game. Now, if you think about, like, if, if you look at the shot, there's a video on YouTube, if you look at the shot, he throws it like a football. Yeah. Like, it doesn't it doesn't have an arc. It, it's not a, you know, high sailing like a three-pointer would be. It's a, it's a beam to right. go in. If you think that's an NBA player from 89 feet. Uh-huh. Our radius is a little bit longer than that, right? It's true. So that's an NBA player throwing from that angle and making it in just barely with a nice flat angle. But he so, could have thrown farther, I bet. Assuming he, assuming that you know they can make the throw, I think what you just found is a, the probability that they actually hit the goal. So out of 100,000, maybe four uh-huh. will actually hit the, the goal. goal, which seems a bit more likely. And that may or sounds may not likely. In. May or yeah. may not go in. There's only one way to know. We have to Where go do this. We're gonna find a hundred thousand people. There's like seven billion people. It should but I be don't easy. Know them. What are the odds of finding a hundred thousand people if we <laughs> have seven billion to pick from? I mean, those right? are like that's basically a hundred percent. Well, but we also our our numbers actually do account for the fact that out of those hundred thousand people we ask, forty percent of them are gonna say no. Yeah. Which, which honestly, can... when I said it back in full in my yes. head. I'm feeling like 60% sounds high. <laughs> I, I, I think you're, you're <laughs> well, giving yourself the, a lot of credit. I, 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 <laughs> hey, come with me to a football field. Blindfolded. Put on this blindfold and come with me. Yeah. I have a feeling. It's starting we'll, to seem lower. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I won't lie to you. It's starting to seem lower. So, okay. Well, when y'all said you had a basketball problem, I was not but ready for this. now, <laughs> let's. That's, uh, yeah. Hey, that's. Hey, we're overanalyzing everything. Right? That's true. And this does fall in the category of everything yes if you took everything in the universe and categorize 100 percent would fall into the category of everything that's right wait so. well technically yes just like we just like we talked about earlier the theory of relativity right 
That's everything. Yeah, everything. So technically speaking, in in the entirety of the universe, everybody at one point would say yes to throwing that basketball. And at ev- and technically speaking, everybody would make it at some point. Okay, so hold on. If 7 billion people, if we got everyone on the face of the earth to do this problem, yes. how many of them would actually make it? Thousand, million, billion. If everyone on the face of the earth did this, based on our numbers, just a, a, a tick over 288,000 people would make the shot. If everyone in the universe. Those are actually, that's pretty. That's a pretty good shooting earth, percentage. Earth. That's not bad, yeah. actually. I mean, all things considered, that's... I mean, it's probably better than Shaq's three-pointer percentage. <laughs> So okay, he was above point zero 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 four <laughs> four zeros. Sorry. So obviously, when you're shooting a shot, though, the situation we just described, you know where the basket is, right? Yeah. You know what you're aiming for, and you are trying to control your distance and direction. And so. Now turning this into a much more boring problem, my th- my mind went to. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't want this to be boring. <laughs> my mind went to like, for example, let's just say Steph Curry. Um, which shout out to Steph because I know you're watching. Um, <laughs> you've been on a tear lately. Good job. So, let's just say we took Steph and asked him to shoot a shot, and yeah. I was like, okay, so if he's a, <laughs> that's a boring problem. If he's able to control his distance and and try to, what's the chances that he makes the shot? And I was like, well, that's a stupid question because he's like what a forty percent three point shooter. So yeah, he's in the that's he's roughly he's in the percentage of him making a shot would yeah. be about forty percent. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> but we know we know the percentage. Well, yes. Yeah. <laughs> We've got a I lot. Think of I was empir- there when you decided that one. Actually. We've got a lot of empirical <laughs> evidence to. Suggest- he said, "What's what's the percent chance he makes?" I was like, "Well." According to actually <laughs> studying him, like forty five percent. Well, that's if he's in okay. a game. So he's, if we if we take the fifty yeah. forty ninety club on his own is a lot higher. Oh gosh, Steve Nash, Steph Curry, who else? Um, gosh, I mean, there's, I mean, there's a heck, like you know, those are all NBA legends. In that. Yeah, yeah. I can't if remember we, who else in that club. Those guys, we know what their percentage would be, but is there a way we can quantify the blindfold? See, I would assume that because of what the randomness that we that they're like are they are they the same theory, as anybody else? In theory, under our situation, I'm just as good a shooter as Steph Curry. Yeah, I'm I mean, every bit as good. I mean, there's a way we can limit their shooting. There's abilities. your soundbite. So there, so that's that's what it is. That what we've really determined is that actually, actually, mathematically, in, the, in the purest form of playing the game of basketball, the purest form. I'm as good as Steph Curry. And, and what do you consider a pure form of basketball? Okay, hold up. Playing the game of basketball because the game of basketball has a lot more to it. But yeah. just in the pure being, form of – There's a lot more to basketball than being blindfolded on a football field. That's what our founding fathers had in mind when they invented the game. Yes. Right? When, this is how Ben Franklin when, wanted to When play. George Washington and Ben decided they were going to shoot some hoops, they went to a football field. Probably Patriots. <laughs> Gillette, yep, probably. Probably. Yeah, Patriots, right? Right. So they go to Gillette State and they're like, what's up, Tom? We're just going to play some basketball. And Tom Brady was like, I got a yo, blindfold. George, this isn't the right place, but I do have a blindfold. Yeah. Um, you're probably looking for like the Staples Center, which is out in Los Angeles. And they said, where? <laughs> so <laughs> you got to manifest them. your destiny to get there, right? Right. Right. So Purchase they. Purchase some Louisiana's or something. Yeah. I think. At yeah, least. Yeah. I, I think that's the history's right there. Yeah. So. They set him on a basketball court and just chucked a basketball. So in the purest form of shooting a basketball, not playing the game, but just shooting a basketball, I'm as good as Steve Nash, Steph, anyone so, that's ever existed. So we could assume that if, like going with the Founding Fathers here, we yes. could assume that anybody who has ever lived and ever will live will have the same probability that we will as making that shot. Right? If we assu- if we just assume everybody has the same throwing power, that and that was I was going to say because if it's set in a radius of zero to thirty yards, yeah. right? So anywhere in a thirty, I think I might have said feet earlier, but anywhere in a thirty yard radius, anyone that has ever lived that can make it that distance. So we're talking about grown people. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, every one of them had the exact same chance of making that shot. So therefore, in in the real grand scheme of things, shooting percentages don't matter because we're all the same, right? Right. Right. So all those all those critics and sports critics, we just ran them out of a job. The fact that Steph nice Curry makes more role. three-pointers yeah. than other players is, again, relative. a miracle. And it's a relative, too. It's a relative miracle. Yep. Because if you scaled that basketball court to our parameters, even any other parameters, it means he's meaningless. His shooting percentage is is meaningless at that point because he is under the same constraints as everybody else. On the basketball court, he has abilities that others don't have as much. Right, but that's not what we're talking about. Here. That's not what we're talking about. Interesting. In the purest form of the game. Talking about founding fathers basketball. Right. The, where everyone's blindfolded on a football field yep. with a moving goal. And I think a peach basket, if I remember right. Right, right. Yep. Okay, so so therefore we what have a just, grand conclusion we've come to there. Yep. I mean, undermine the entire sport. So what's the point? What? Well, the point is to make money, <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, I mean, they shoot the ball so they can go home and get the cash. They make a lot of money because they are really good at putting a sphere of rubber in between a ring of metal, and they or are, preventing others from doing the they same. They are very option. good at same it. Same thing. <laughs> they are very, very. Good. It's when you really break down any and sport. That is their gift. Any yep. sport to it's just physical bare bones it's really a oh, yeah. weird thing jerry rice is rich and famous because when you throw that oblong shaped ball at him he is really good at not letting it hit the ground yep huh it's very good yeah. at it and so jerry I mean, rice if you're listening shout out um he is he's you're pretty good yeah you're you're, you're not bad pal yeah. although in the purest form of preventing a ball from hitting the ground i think i'm no I'm, okay wait wait wait, get, wait wait no whoa, whoa, oh whoa. no <laughs> okay <laughs> Oh I gosh! Deep you, we, there. I, I think so, I think we have gone deep so enough. That think. is that is a story for another time. Yeah the the <laughs> um the odds of preventing a oh great oh so now it's preventing a ball from hitting the ground in very specific ten yard if we're talking about like a touchdown <laughs> yeah in a very specific ten like... yard segment <laughs> on the face of the earth. <laughs> Oh my goodness, Jerry Rice is, is a master. Holy <laughs> cow. If you, now we're talking about surface area of the entire earth, okay, right? Coach. And he's got <laughs> he got to hit that one rectangle. So if we put him anywhere on the face of the earth, blindfolded, just like the founding fathers were. <laughs> spin him said, around. And we spin around and said, "Hey, we're somewhere throwing. on earth a football is dropping. Stop it." <laughs> Wait, wait, but he has to get there in the first place. He got to get there. He's got to keep from hitting the ground, and it's got to be in the right. Re- so the fact the uh, the odds of that rectangle or the ball even falling in that rectangle in and of itself is is uh, we need surface area of the earth now. I don't want it. I don't. <laughs> Too bad. It's coming. <laughs> Hold up. I, I got this. I didn't I, know it'd go this far. Google's. Uh, I I wasn't ready for this either, but it's a beautiful discussion. Okay, so hold on. Okay. Surface area of Earth. Yeah. Not surface right earth there. of area. Oh, we got our... Okay, is, yeah, 196 square miles. miles. Okay, so I've got to convert... Yes. A football field's a, or a, an end zone is 10 foot or ten yards by 50 yards, right? Yep. So 500 square yards to uh, square miles. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, let's see. We got it up here. Times... Um, and then... Point zero 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 one six square miles. Here, hold on a second. Get that for me again. You ready? Just uh, a second. Go ahead. Yeah. Point zero 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 one six square miles, and that divided by one hundred ninety six point nine million. Yeah. Yes, so that's one hundred ninety six thousand million. Now we're getting somewhere. So what is that? It is <laughs> roughly eight times ten to the negative eleventh percent. I've already converted to percent okay. for you. So the idea. That, that, and that's, that's just, just the, the football, chance right? that the football lands in the end zone. Wait, how big is the football? Huh? How big is the football? Oh, see, it's like the basketball. It okay. cancels out. Okay, know? okay. Um, just making sure. Oh, but no, now we're – now. hold on. Mm-hmm. Because if I give a ball to a quarterback and say throw it somewhere, he can't hit anywhere on the face of the earth. No. But if we set the quarterback in a random spot, spin him around. Said mm-hmm. throw the football. And then we set Jerry Rice in a randomly chosen spot. Spin him around. And we say, Joe, Montana, obviously. Yeah. Throw this football somewhere. 
And then we'd say, Jerry Rice, he's going to throw the football now. Go catch it. And they're both blindfolded. The odds of that football landing in the end zone and Jerry Rice catching it, that's astronomical. That is. Because now now we are kind of back to the idea, because I think it kind of covers the geometric probability of him, of Joe Montana actually, you know. First of all, throwing it in the end zone. Yeah. And then Jerry Rice. And he did it 23 times in one season. This is an un. I never really appreciated how good Jerry Rice was. Yeah. And Joe Montana, for Heck, that for throwing there. That's and Steve incredible. Young. I mean, even – I mean, at that point, Vince Young, he threw a touchdown. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah. That's nuts. I've never thrown a t- – have you thrown a touchdown? I have never thrown a touchdown. So, I mean, we're sitting there watching. It's like yeah. Steve uh, – Vince Young is literally breaking the laws of physics and mathematics. Yes. On a daily basis. Well, it was, well, well, was on a yeah. Sundayly basis a few years ago, <laughs> and we're watching. It's like, oh, you're you're so trash, and he's doing something that is mathematically impossible. Something we could never even dream of doing. No, like one not could. not the fact that we're not pro capable, at least not right now. Like this. Wow, I never appreciated Vince Young. I no wonder he won the Rose Bowl. Yep. Wow. Matt Lyon never stood a chance. No, not not with the. Wow. Holy cow! There's obviously factors I'm not fully appreciating. Here. I, I feel but, like but you've I, missed I, I, some variables. There are some variables that are not being accounted. I here. feel like you are overlooking variables. And but for the a life of me, general I, understanding of how Mr. Henson, do we do we need a voice of reason here? Yeah, well, I, I mean, apologize. I think we might. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do believe I just, that as well. Just a second ago, I just claimed that Vince Young was a great quarterback, so I think we might need a voice of reason here. <laughs> that is <laughs> tr- – well, hey, look. Be, for, forget being, the, forget me being as good as Steph Curry. I said Vince Young was a good quarterback. <laughs> hey, being the resident <laughs> Tennessee <laughs> fan, um, I I feel the pain. Yeah, that's yeah. that's a rough one. Hey, Sorry. I've got, I mean, I've got his jersey at home, but – oh, See, from our view, we he had – He was a Packer th- quarterback for a while, too. That was a fun, like – Nine Week. weeks. Yeah. Hey, Randy <laughs> Moss was a Titan. <laughs> also a fun nine weeks. <laughs> I don't think it was even nine weeks. Gosh, maybe it was maybe a month. And so it's no surprise he didn't catch any touchdowns for nope. the Titans. <laughs> I mean, as he, hard as it is to do. Yeah. There's no way he could No wonder. It. He probably used all of that luck he had with the Patriots and with the Vikings. Correction. Actually, now you mentioned Randy Moss. It was Randy Moss who caught 23 touchdowns in a season. Jerry mm-hmm. Rice is 22. Yes. In a strike sor- shortened season. Mm-hmm. Which is yep. incredible, yep. but we're not just imagine about. his pace if he finished nuts. that nuts, nuts, nuts. So well, and with, impossible, really. The thing with Randy, <laughs> as we've proven, yeah, clearly, yeah. So, sorry, I was just saying, yeah. The thing with Randy Moss, he was so like was it, inconsistent. He was inconsistent. He he would have weeks where he just didn't feel like playing. Well, Wes Welker. He would have been the best, uh, cor- best uh, receiver white receiver of all time, time if he wanted to be. Yep. What do I we mean, got up there? Because we is that the Rose Bowl? Yeah, man. Because we we played. I that mean, was a killer game. What was Vince Young's stat yeah. line? Help me out there, Scott. Um, I got you. I got it. He only threw well, one touchdown, Vince which Young. is not surprising. He had two hundred. Oh, his oh, rushing. Good. He rushed nineteen times for two hundred oh, yards and three yeah. touchdowns. Oh, Vince didn't, 30, throw, a touchdown. didn't throw a touchdown. Thirty of forty for two hundred sixty-seven Ooh, yards, right? no touchdowns. Matt Leinart yeah, threw he, a touchdown. He yeah, did. Matt Leinart threw a touchdown. He ran for three touchdowns though. No, Don't running's start. a lot easier. Running's a lot easier. A lot easier running for a touchdown. Throwing is the hard. So Vince Young is actually terrible. Now the world makes sense. Or, or he's just average. He's lazy. He took the easy way. He ran. He ran. Yep. That's Running the easy quarterbacks. Way. So, actually, credit to Matt Leinart, who did throw a touchdown, and yet his team still Ooh. let him down. What yep. have we got highlighted there? Oh, boy. Oh, this is not going to be good, is it? <laughs> Let's see. I can't say it. They're punting. Backpacks covering it. Punting. Oh, no. Are we going to talk about touch? They didn't get any touchbacks. Oh. So, now it's not only... Going, I hope that's not expensive. Punting, now it's okay. not only going. Um, they average with, thirty-four yards a punt. So okay, but think of punting. Kicking a ball is different than throwing a ball into the end zone. Oh god, a touchback. You're, you're right. <laughs> How hard is it to get a touchback? Because the leg can kick a lot farther than well, an then arm it, can throw. It's just as long as you've got the right distance within the right angle, you'll get a touchback. So it'll go behind the end zone. But what about pinning someone inside the twenty or inside the five? Because inside the 20s, okay. Well, on Madden 2006, it was really hard to do because you had to do it for challenges, and it was very hard. That's true. So if that means anything. I we got something else up now. What is it? I'm loving this stat feed in the back, though. This is huge. 
Brandy Moss's 23 touchdowns with the Patriots, or did he catch oh, he touchdowns was, with the Titans? No, he he caught. He'd have yeah, he'd have been the best receiver of all time if he yeah, actually played. He caught zero played. touchdowns with the Titans. Yeah, well that makes. I mean, so he played against. That's what I thought. He played against Packers all the time, and there would literally be drives at a time where he just would not even leave the line of scrimmage. No, well, yeah, he'd just stand there. Well, it was he, like, and he would just say he doesn't feel like running that play, so he doesn't. Who? <laughs> so really, Randy Moss is an architect of his own probability. So he got to he, he got to choose whether or not he wanted to be an astronomical phenomenon. Is every game, every sport, is just an overconstriction of a pure form of athletic <laughs> expression, except for one game that exists that is absolutely one hundred percent pure, and, and that's kick it. Very well, by, true. By pure, you're meaning random. I mean. Yes, I guess. Oh, there's a song. <laughs> so, so really, if you look at that Rose Bowl again, and I think that might have been what what uh, Audio Man Man was trying to show us was yes. there's really only one person that actually played the game properly, and that's why, and that was the punter, the because he was kicking. Yep, it. punters are people too. Punt, pun, punters are pure athletes. Good for them. Well, well, I mean that was that was very very enlightening to say the least. Um, was it? I. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you think about it. It was entertaining, I should say, it, at least for me. It, it me got and a somewhere. Some, maybe maybe Steph. Yeah, I bet he got a kick out of it too. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh man, kick it is an actual game. Yeah, I mean, I knew what you were saying, but not but... the actual. <laughs> It's not the right game, but there is such a thing as it looks it, like it looks like a oh, mixture sorry. between volleyball and lawn darts, but you use your feet. I hope you don't use a dart. Well, let me. No, 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 you only kick like it once. Darts. So wait, wait. <laughs> kick it itself is just it's it's a volleyball net on the ground, and you use a hacky sack with a tail. Mm-hmm. I, I ain't mad at that. No, There's nothing wrong with that. That is a beautiful. Why did why have we? The, although they really should have thought harder about these action photos because. They look kind of... They look silly yeah. mid-game, you know? Well, I mean, really, if you think about it, it's like pausing a movie. Um, you always get a weird facial expression. That's true. So, I mean, you know, at least they maybe they got real cannon shots. It wasn't like, you know... Right. Um, I guess staged or anything. So, staying on the topic of extreme probabilities, but, but taking a bit of a deviation, I know this is kind of your more area of expertise, Mr. Ensign. Although, okay. like, you, you have been I'm our voice expert. of reason, now it's time to get ludicrous. Not actually go okay. get him. He's I was not about to say, he's probably saying, filming he's a Fast here? and Furious got movie, him? right? Yeah. He's not here. But <laughs> Okay, bummer. I was told Ludacris would be here. All right. Um, <laughs> That's the only reason I showed up. I was thinking the other day, how crazy is it that a video game idea, like, say, Spyro the Dragon, actually was thought of and made? How okay. crazy is that? That a, that a purple dragon... <laughs> Did all the things more he like did. how crazy was the person who came up with it? See, how it's like how how do you how do you quantify that thought process, or can you even like how does it come about? Well, like you imagine all the entire thoughts you could ever have if you're oh, like, boy. I, I, I don't want, want to do more probabilities. <laughs> okay, I, I, well, <laughs> if we went to a random person on the street no. <laughs> and asked them. If you had a video game well, idea, what would it be? I think Coach may be able to find it. I think, like, Spyro, I think the idea, a lot of them, it was just like a drawing. And they're like, hey, we can make a game out of this. And it just developed from there. Or they made some games, like Kirby, was made with just shapes. They decided the gameplay, and they made a bunch of shapes. And Kirby, they never thought of a right shape, so he was just left as the little shape they had for him, and that's well, Kirby. Who, who, yeah. Kirby was uh, he was inspired by a lawyer. Like, I'm, I'm actually very like serious, his, really. I'm, I'm talking about his shape. His shape. They didn't have a shape I, for him. I know. His shape was inspired by a lawyer. Hmm. I, I saw this on... That's I don't remember. It was like... Some, what? Yeah, there was up, some, why is some, Kirby the shape that he Some is? legal suit that oh, d- Nintendo creation. was involved in. Yeah, the character design was intended to serve as placeholder graphics for the game's original protagonist. Huh. And thus was given a simple ball-like appearance. And... Uh, and this is quoted and they from swapped Wikipedia. to the official character design. 
um, the name Kirby was chosen in honor of American lawyer John Kirby. Okay, so there that you was go. the name. Was it? Name, but yeah, fault. the shape was a placeholder. Oh, but anyway, I, I thought it, I thought it was like a little round headed fella, and they're like, "Hey, let's just put arms no. and feet on his head." <laughs> no, they're like, video. "We don't know. What, we don't know what this guy should look like yet." So right now, it's just a ball with a, with arms and a mouth, and they said, "You know what? Actually, I like this. Works for me." See how how's it? Like how crazy is it that they actually left that as think, as his model? I think it's crazier what actually takes off then. See, that's yeah. what, like, I think I think to go yeah somewhere it's, it's really nuts what becomes popular and what doesn't. Yeah, like, because I mean I mean this I'm reading a little bit they got Spyro there is like yeah it's just crazy the the changes they go through and well like I mean even if you think something more recent towards my time like the Halo game it started out as um just a showcase of new game mechanics that they just yep. wanted to see so they just kind of designed stuff randomly and then. They were bought by Microsoft and told to make a game for the Xbox. Really? And so they were like, let's take all of these, all of this tech demo and all of this stuff that we have, these new mechanics, and let's make a game. Dude, I was so bad at Halo. I was so <clears throat> bad at that game. And so you're like, right there, <laughs> oh Halo goodness. started off as a strategy game for the Mac. Yeah. It, and, and then... It, and it, Like I said, Mac, no, Mac. Yo, it was, it, was, it was Mac, and then Microsoft Mac. bought them That's after Macworld. Says. And then they bought them, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Macworld. Yep, Macworld so, was like yeah, a I think McDonald's It's, it's nuts what... <laughs> Macworld. It's nuts as to what actually takes off and becomes popular. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've it's played crazy. some... Like, a few games I've played have been, you know, amazing, but you wouldn't really hear about them too much. Like, there's a game called Castle Crashers. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Nope. It was made for the Xbox Live Arcade, if you remember that weird era of where it was like, if you had an Xbox mm-hmm. Live subscription, they would kind of release these little games... That would maybe take yeah, 10, 12 those. hours to complete those. at most. And you could get them for free. Yeah. And um, Castle Crashers was one of them, made by some ex-developers from, um, oh gosh. I don't know, same guys who made like Battle Block Theater and um, Balloons Tower Defense, stuff like that. They were kind yeah. of made the, made Flash games almost. Oh, and um, the game was incredible. It blew my mind as a kid. It was like a side-scroller beat em up um, but you, when you when you moved to areas, the screen would lock. Mm-hmm. And that game never it was you know it was probably popular, but it never really took off in a huge way. But I loved it; it was awesome. So it's weird that I had such a different experience with that game than say somebody would with like I don't know the Left for Dead series, which I never really <laughs> cared for too much. But that was huge back when they were out. Well, you it, it's just it, it again seems like it's all first person shooters now. <laughs> it's a lot of third. Third person action is real popular too. Yeah, but um, like the Uncharted yeah, series. I think that's crazy. Is what what does become popular and how you know how the process goes. I mean, the uh, Batman Arkham Asylum started as like a kind of musical based like rhythm game, and then it, and it was made by a company that had I think one other game and it was some survival horror or something, some random thing. But it's just it's very crazy what takes off and what. You know, games yeah. like Minecraft are just huge. I mean, yeah. Huge. But the recent Avengers game kind of crashed and burned. Like, it's just crazy. <laughs> or, what, I mean, it's awesome popular what it games. Well, see, right like now. you just said, Minecraft. I mean, <laughs> it's a game that started out as you were stuck in creative mode, and all you had were two blocks, the dirt and stone. And that's all you had to build with. And now it's the most, it has the most copies sold of any game ever. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Which is which is weird that that game happened to take off, but a game like, I mean, even one of the Final Fantasies that has so much, you know, deep stuff, and it's and it's this huge world, and it's got all this lore and the story, hasn't even sold close to as many copies as Minecraft has. Yeah, yeah. there it is, Minecraft, number one sold. Yeah, game. number one. Okay. And even Tetris, for that matter, yeah. Tetris has no story. No, nothing. It's a puzzle Dude, game. Don't, don't be knocking Tetris now. Hey, hey, look, hey. I'm a, I'm a fan of Tetris, but if you think about it as as what people enjoy a game as today, they enjoy either the challenge, the competitiveness, or the story. Right? Those are the three things you can generalize. Tetris has the just gameplay, yeah, strategy, I guess, kind of. Sort Tetris has of, well, the has the strategy and the competitiveness. Right? right? Yep. Have y'all ever seen? They've got Tetris World Championships. Yeah, they do. Oh yeah, they're insane. It's like it's like watching a chess world championship. It's the most intense That's thing nuts. ever. Well, for chess, it has to be like a blitz game, because like yep. the legit world championship. I don't know if you if you've ever seen the like legit chess world championship matches. They're untimed. 
Oh, boy. So, guys are sitting in a room, and, like, one dude will make his move, and then hit, they've got, like, I think they got, like, couches or something for them to go sit on. They'll go chill at the couch for a second while their opponent's thinking for a while. <laughs> they'll just, they'll, after a few minutes, they'll make a move, and then, of course, they're keeping track of all the games. There's your world championship, by the way, for Tetris. Which is like, just look how fast that nuts. is. Because, well, because you know, in, in Tetris, once you move up levels, the pa- the pieces start moving faster. Yeah, and there's like, like they, I, I, I was watching one of these. Honestly, I spent longer watching this than I probably even should have, but it, I just I got hooked on. I was kind of well, yeah. amazed by it. But they talked about that some of the different uh, levels that y- no one's ever beaten before, and all this good stuff because it just gets going so fast you can't even keep up. It's no. It's kind of wild, actually. Well, because Tetris isn't quite like what Pac-Man was. Mm-hmm. You know, because um, Pac-Man had a cap because the binary code ran out. Right. It couldn't generate any more right levels. Right past what, le- was it 256? 256, yep. Or was it 255 and level 256 was broken? I don't remember. I can't or remember. Something like that. But no. um, something like that. So they, ch- they had to change the record because the record wasn't who could get the highest level because the level stopped. It was who could get to that level right. the fastest. Right. So, I mean, if you think about it, somebody who is good at a video game is like somebody who's good at a sport. If we took somebody who was good at a video game, say Tetris, blindfolded them, <laughs> spun them around, and told them that your game of Tetris has just started, good luck. Would they be as good as anybody else? I'll pu- I'll tell you this. I <laughs> bet you that like the Pac-Man guy could probably even beat the game blindfolded. Yeah, I bet you. He I, could. I bet. I bet. There Pac-Man are there are speed run, ca- there are are, speed run yep. categories for people playing games. Well, like Punch Out. You remember Mike Tyson's Punch Out? Um, uh, yes. There is. Uh, there yes, is a I've speed run that. category of blindfolded Punch that. Out. Could you? There's imagine? actually more complicated, like 3D games. People do blindfolded because they just learn it so in and out. They can play it. And see, even that's looking. the thing. If you if you have a game that's not random, right? That has patterns, mm-hmm. like Tetris. You really can't quantify right, it because it's completely cubes random. Coming up are, are random, yeah. but games like Punch Out and Pac Man and you know even newer titles sometimes they have blindfolded categories. And there's the broken Pac Man, by the way. So he's yep he's maxed out, hmm. which is kind of. Could you imagine crazy. being the first one to get to that level and, and being just, like, just like, what the heck? what's happening? <laughs> what just happened to? Uh, I just broke your game. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's freaky. It is. Um, it's weird that. I mean, if you think about it, they're they have a better odd, they have better odds of of accomplishing their goal than somebody who does at you know than somebody does at sports, in the same conditions. Even if we spun them around, I bet they'd still, blindfolded, <laughs> spun around, they could still play a game of Pac Man and probably do better than if we put Steph Curry blindfolded and spun around I'd say so yes much fewer variables obviously much fewer variables. but but if you got rid of all that <laughs> and just on. went by circumstantial because if we put the oh arcade boy, in the middle here of again a, <laughs> if we put the arcade in the middle of a football field <laughs> said, hey pac-man's oh, man. out here somewhere <laughs> go find him and find him it. before the ghosts hit him <laughs> that's awesome oh goodness <laughs> No, I won't. Well, we won't I, I don't think we should. Again. I don't think we should go there today. Could you imagine though? You know, you've got you mentioned speed running. Yes. I thought of that. I, I, I just recently found out that was a thing where people just beat games just as fast as they can. That's what they do. Yeah. They don't, but they don't do anything else. No, that's they all they do. They can't. Could you imagine? Like, is there anything in the on Earth? Is there anything? That you would want to commit that much time to. to get I think that I would get too at. tired of it, to be honest with you. If there anything, was, I forget would a video game. Forget just anything that. in the world. Could was there anything you would commit that much time to to to, to be the best? Even to be, if the, you, to be the best at. Is there anything you would commit that much time to to be the best? I at? I don't think I could. It wouldn't <laughs> satisfy me. No, there's got to be more. I think I would hate the work if I did it that. The way. closest thing I could think of that I would actually, and I wouldn't, but if I had to pick something they said you are going to dedicate the rest of your life to this one talent skill or hobby right yeah because you know i can't make it something broad like oh i want to be the the best person i can be no no like yeah. let's let's leave it to a talent mm-hmm. so that's a little more concrete the closest thing i'd come up to would be maybe like guitar right mm-hmm. yeah, but like even that, that I, like you said i'd get sick of it yeah. after a while well it's like i mean from what i've seen especially if you know the game contra 
Like yeah. that is one of the hardest games I've heard to speed run because of how precise and how like to like how you have to know the game like the back mm-hmm. of your hand. I've never I mean, played it, but I've heard with with any I've tried it. With any game it's like that, but I bet Contra it's probably It a, is you know, known for its difficulty. It's insane. So, from from the speed runs I've seen, when people get their records, they just seem like, like I've heard a few people say, you know, I'm I'm done with this game. Here's Contra done in nine minutes and fifty three well, seconds. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was um, it was a, if I remember right, it yeah. was a Breath of the Wild speed running category, and Breath of the Wild is a long game. Yeah, and it was hundred percent without damage. If I think. without damage, it was something like that. But it was like a. It takes like forty hours for a speedrunner to do start to finish. Yep. And like I saw a story of this dude who had to do it like four or five times because like thirty something hours in he would get hit. Yep. He'd have oh. to restart or something like that. Well, they do. And we, I remember thinking like, why? What? Why are you doing this? I mean, they do the same what thing with doing? Grand Theft Auto speedruns. I mean, there's been a whole thing on YouTube lately of a, of just a compilation there's, of failures, and that game is so long. You talk about a successful game that the last. Five has sold twenty million copies like Second last to, year. Yeah, sold twenty million look, copies. Look at this game, which is nuts. Like, yeah, yeah that's contra, I'd, I'd have died three times just in the few seconds we're watching. You'd have never made it to this level. And dude. see, the thing about I, wow, thanks. The thing about <laughs> contra, the ga- well, not without a lot of practice. Yeah, I've tried this game. It's insane. The thing about contra is there's so there's a whole lot of stuff that goes into it. That's the duos that that we're currently watching off mm-hmm. camera right now. Um. If you do a single player contra speed run, you have to you have to count your like your presses. You have to have a rhythm for pressing because there can only be a certain amount of bullets on the screen at a time, mm-hmm. or none of them do damage. So you have to there's a it's what's called a sprite limit, you know. Mm-hmm. Right. So you have to have a rhythm for your for your pressing pattern for your shooting. There's random enemy spawns. Like they kind of spawn in the same general areas, but they're all <laughs> random. They're all random. So there's <laughs> random enemy spawns. And then some of the some of the different things are on a global timer, like the lasers in um, in one of the levels, and then the claws and hanger, hmm. they're on a global timer from power on. So you have to make sure you get a good global timer. There's so many different variables that go in. It's crazy lucky to see and, a speed run work out. And the know? other option would be like a I guess a spawn timer, mm-hmm. like the timer from the time they spawn on screen. I guess. Yeah. Wow, that's nuts. I know it's well. It's um, if you ever see a Mario speed run, sometimes if you ever watch like the original, they'll uh. sit on the home screen for a few minute, for a few like a few seconds, you know, like one, two, and then they'll go. They go at that time because they know <clears throat> if they play the game perfectly, they end on a certain frame, and so they won't lose any time overall. But it helps out later in the game. So that knowledge and that forethought, combined with the <laughs> luck, it's incredible how what? they even get through one run completely you know do they (laughs) it it, and like people are watching this inspiring it's like yes that's it that's what i want with my life you see how he falls on that screen (laughs) genius yes this guy's my hero i've got his poster i don't think anyone has a post but like i said i couldn't imagine anything that i would commit my life that hard to to honing to that degree much less something so frivolous yes that's unbelievable i mean what they don't they don't get paid on it besides what streams so i mean there's people that make a very good you know talk about frivolous jobs there's people make a very good living just talking about the clothes that celebrities are wearing and they make a good living that's all they do i just recently comment on people's clothes yeah though one of the the worst, though, and it's I'm, I'm guilty of, of patronizing them myself, but that's sports analysts. Yeah. Because, like, they, I was listening on the way home on the radio. They've gotten worse. And, no, this this is great. Y'all, y'all have heard of the new NFL numbering rule? They expanded number yes. limits for, for oh, players. Oh, really? Yeah, so, like, linebackers, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but linebackers can be any number, like, 1 to 60. Wow. So can running backs. So can receivers. That's awesome. I or think it might have been 50 might have been 50 one to 50 but still like running backs can be you know Dalvin Cook has already said he's probably going back to number four now yeah right? which is crazy now Tom when I saw that I didn't really care about it Tom Brady hated it 
I knew Tom really? Brady was mad about it, but I didn't. He was mad why. about it. He and his reason he said uh, he shared like a, a capture of the the different numbering uh, limits. Now he said, uh, how do you say it? Oh, he said, good luck finding the right person to block, or good luck finding the middle linebacker, or something like that. Basically, because mm. there's like a lot of overlap between linebackers and safeties and things like that. Yeah, to where it's hard to keep track. Now, in my mind, to to me, it's like. Well, I mean, I'm sorry. The reason, you know, when you're playing the, the Ravens of the 2000s, you didn't recognize, oh, Ray Lewis is the middle linebacker because he's not number 20, so I know he's not Ed Reed, right? Yeah. You knew who he was, yeah. and I think that's what is going to play out. When people play the Vikings, they're going to know, oh, number four is Dalvin Cook. They didn't know it because he's number 33. They knew it because he's Dalvin Cook, Cook. right? Yeah. So they're going to know it anyway, so I don't think that's a matter. But back to the sports analyst thing. I was listening to these guys on the radio, and they were talking about and one guy was saying, Oh, no, Tom Brady's not mad about this. And so this is Tom Brady making fun of other quarterbacks who uh, who might have trouble reading blitzes and, and defensive packages. He's not mad about it. He's fine. He's he's making fun of other quarterbacks. It's like, based on what? Yeah. But what killed me about it is that that was such a stupid take. Yeah. Had nothing to, to base it off of. Because he doesn't know him. Brady didn't say yeah. that. But it That's doesn't matter. Him. It doesn't matter. He can just say whatever he wants, and he's going to get paid the same, yeah. whether he's right or wrong. In fact, better yet, even if, if Brady come out the next day and said, this guy who said this thing was wrong, I never said that, it would only help the guy's career. Yep. Like, to be caught out for being wrong would only help him. That's where you end up with people like Skip Bayless, who I know for a fact, fact, does not actually believe half the things he's saying. No. He can't. No intelligent person could actually say no, the things he he's can't. saying <laughs> and believe yes. it and be and believe he's being consistent and, and precise. And we know he does have some logic because he used to be a respected analyst. Yeah. No, he just knows how to he just knows how to make money. Yeah. And so he realized that his job is not based on being right. It doesn't have to be. You just have to have an opinion. And, and it has it to be a, it has to be an opinion that'll catch people's attention. Yeah, that's that's literally and the easy way to do that is to make it just an absurd, ridiculous opinion. And that job's every bit as frivolous as like a, uh, as a dude? professional video game speedrunner. Kellerman is that, that Max him? Kellerman? Yeah, from he's first another one. I mean, don't they overanalyze things? <laughs> well, not like this. <laughs> I but numbers. I mean, it's a. It gets, <laughs> you might, might not have liked my numbers, but I had numbers. But, I mean, you can get that kind of touched into just a bit more serious. But I mean, there are people that are put in char- charge of serious, like countrywide decisions, like foreign policy decisions, that have been wrong virtually their whole career about everything. Can we? Can and there's not. There's no. There's no fallback for it, you know? Yeah, you sure. can make a huge. Sorry, and we'll we'll look at that. Yeah. Yeah, I need that. You can make a huge prediction over some major issue be totally wrong and it doesn't matter oh it's it irritates me <laughs> let's these are let's the five to the... steps to a skip bayless hot take this is brilliant so step one moderator asks a provocative question audience knows we'll get skip riled up example is lebron james the best player of this generation nice yes step two uh scott i, I, I can't oh, read i'm that. sorry I'll no you're good debate you, opponent uh, makes rational point yeah. so an example, LeBron has averaged 27 points, 7.5 rebounds, 7.5 assists per game. He went to eight consecutive finals and won four MVP awards. Which, ignore the fact that LeBron's an, a massive idiot if you're watching We'll LeBron, get to that sorry. later. But we'll, I'm not. If you're watching, you are an, but, a uh, massive idiot. Uh, he's an incredible basketball player. Step three, yeah. Skip reframes the question. LeBron may be the best player born on the last Sunday of the week in December, but is he better than Michael Jordan? <laughs> 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 Step four. Uh, Unleashes completely anecdotal argument that is impossible to prove is false. In big games, the chosen one keeps turning into the frozen one. Prince James simply isn't clutch. Five. Get thousands of retweets and comments calling him an idiot. Rinses and repeats. Tomorrow on Undisputed, I'll explain to Shannon why Tim Tebow is the answer to the Patriots quarterback problems. Wow. That is that is yeah, very, very a, accurate. What a what a, a flow chart there. That's awesome. Well, I mean, if you think, the more ludicrous you get. Um, it's more attention. Yeah, it's, more t- it's easy. And again, we know it's scripted because when he left um, first take, Stephen A. Smith suddenly, instantly, overnight took Skip Bayless's ridiculous opinions, and so like things that Stephen A. Smith would argue against Skip Bayless like a month before, he's now arguing in favor of. Yeah, because it's it's a scripted opinion to get attention. That's what it is. It's not what they actually think. Stephen A. Smith is also an idiot. Again, we were just talking about these sports analysts. Maybe, maybe we should take their jobs. They're idiots. 
We could do this. I think we could do this. I mean, well, like the the insider guy on NFL Network, who is just wrong all the time. Yeah. I don't know his name. He's just wrong all the time. Well, he's not on NFL Network anymore. Oh, okay. You're talking about Lock on Four. I'm talking about him. Yes. Where is he now? Is he anywhere? I have no idea. He's somewhere. <laughs> but still being wrong. He had things. a job for might, years he, as he, an insider. He could be one of our 100,000 people. And he had he like missed a, that shot for sure. <laughs> he had like an 80, 85 percent like rate of being completely wrong. And he kept his job. Well, it was funny. It was ridiculous. Uh, there were reports that the Redskins a couple years back were looking to trade in the draft, right. like trade up or something. I can't remember. I mean, there were a lot of reports. And we heard Jason Lockonfora, who, if you can read that, you can tell me who he's working with now. Um, He's currently in – I don't know. I don't see where is he, he back is on, now. Oh, he, um, he, he uh, He's on a pod – he has his own podcast. Yep, with Jerry Coleman. Oh, yeah, his contract ex- – his contract expired with uh, CBS Sports. Okay. Well, he left NFL Network for CBS Sports, and that I think he's out of that contract. Cool. I can't really see where, but I don't know. He might still be but a CBS anyways, Sports, but he left NFL Network for CBS Sports. And yeah. to the point that we all thought the 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 Redskins were going to trade in the draft. Because he until said we his, heard Jason Lockett for us say, "Yeah, I, my my sources tell me the Redskins going to trade." Oh, never mind. They're not going to trade. And they didn't trade. Because <laughs> that's what he said. My sources tell me they're going to trade. What sources? always bugs me you clearly don't have sources because yes. no one <laughs> everyone in trade. the organization saying no we're not trading and then they don't trade so you can't possibly have an inside man telling you this so are you just saying my sources so you sound reliable what are you doing it's it's the flip of a coin right analysts irritate me for that reason because there's no <laughs> there's no uh consequence for being wrong there's no accountability there's no nothing it's just say anything that comes to your head and you, you and yet people still listen to it. <laughs> I respect those that acknowledge that their opinion is meaningless. Like if you ever watch Dan hey. Patrick, mm-hmm. it's it's funny listening to him talk because he anytime he talks about something, he, even if it's pretty inconsequential, he'll always kind of acknowledge the fact it's like, you know, this is just my opinion. Here's what I think, and here's why. But you know, who cares? Whatever. Yeah. You know, I I, I don't know. I the, mean, hey, the way he approaches it, our opinions are are our opinions. He did. He doesn't approach it with some overarching sense of self-importance that just kind of irritates me watching, like the Skip Bayless, the Stephen A. Smiths, Max Kellermans, and well, most of ESPN now. This has by far been been a wonderful journey. It's been something else. It's been something, yes. that's for sure. It Hey, it was an occurrence, right? It did something happen. That happened. It yep. falls under the realm of everything. And that's I couldn't true. thank you enough for being a part of this occurrence with me. Thanks for having us on. And Appreciate thank it. you for listening. Um, I hope to see you whenever I get another video out. Or audio, depending on which whichever one you're watching it on. These podcasts are going to be on Spotify, and I hope to get them um, farther out and more distributed sometime soon. And thank you again to Coach and Mr. Henson for being here with me today. Um, I have thoroughly enjoyed it, and I hope to maybe have you both on separately or together again for a whole different topic because man we could talk forever looking but forward to it sounds good thank you both um and i will see you next time this has been over analyzing everything with skylar bowling